Right, Yvonne. Uh, I've got a little bit different project today. So this is a mini bike, um, as you can probably see. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a barn find, or as the Australians call it, a shed find. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and get it going today. It's been sitting for probably about more than 10 years. Um, so yeah, try and get it going. I've already pumped up the tyres. As you may expect, they were probably flat. Uh, but yeah, no, it's got a little bit of ability to actually sit on it now. So yeah, pretty comfortable actually. It's got good back suspension. Um, yeah, so it is not locked up. I can turn it over, and it does have a little two stroke by the looks whippersnipper motor. So it should be a banger of a thing once it's going. Um, but yeah, so it is, as I said, two stroke. So I'll have to put X two stroke fuel foil in here. Um, it's not got a little reservoir like some bikes have on the side. We just fill it with oil and then put petrol in the tank and it automatically mixes it. But yeah, um, I suspect, obviously it's got no fuel, so we're probably gonna have to check for spark first. You know what these wires are for. Hopefully nothing important. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna check for spark. See if it wants to, at least with fuel in the tank, if it wants to do anything. Um, and then yeah, we'll move on from there. So, the choke seems to work. I oh, threw the choke, the throttle. This is our choke here. Which way it's supposed to be right now, I don't know. I'm guessing that's on and that's off because it's more, it's more spring loaded there. It's easy to push back down. Um, but yeah, we'll chuck some fuel in it and see if it wants to at least pop. All right, so we've got some two stroke oil here. Some mixed two stroke fuel. Yeah, put that in. It's a 40 to 1 ratio. I only done it half full. And then we doesn't run. I haven't wasted a whole lot of fuel. Right, we'll leave that now to the side. We'll see if it wants to pop. Choke on. I might have to pry it up first, I'm guessing. Does it feel like it's very... Mm. Yeah, the pulling is just cark itself. Sort of gets for sitting in the shed for that long. Hmm. Well, there's not fuel coming down yet. Smells like there's fuel, but... Hmm. Just to the spark. All right, so we've got our spark plug out. Check for some spark now. Beautiful. Awesome spark. Well, at least we know it's fuel related. All right, so unfortunately, I can't get it to run. So we'll pull this little whippersnipper carburetor off here. Apparently they're pretty easy to come by. So my dad says. 
So I'll just pull it off. Hope they're easy to come by. Can't really be bothered fixing this one up. It will depend if the jets are removable. I also have to get a priming bulb anyway. Because it doesn't seem to want to prime because the the actual bulb is broken, unfortunately. Um, okay. Oh, I don't like the look of that. Yeah, I might think we might just buy a new carburetor looking at that. It's a wild machine. <laughs> Far out. <laughs> Far out. I gotta show you this. So take a look at what it just dug up in this bloody ground here. <laughs> what the hell? This thing's got some go to it. I can't wait until this thing's going. <laughs> it's gonna be a little ripper. Alrighty, so we got a carburetor here. I'll have to go into the mower shop tomorrow and see if I can't find a bulb for it and maybe even a kit for it. But yeah, I don't know. I might probably won't buy a new carburetor. I'll think about it, see how bad this one is. But other than that, I'll see. Maybe they might sell a new carburetor at the mower shop for cheap or a, even a kit for it that's pretty cheap, maybe 10 bucks or something. If I go get a kit, that'd be all right. It means I just pull it apart and put it back together and it'd be somewhat like new um but yeah i don't really need the bike so if i can't get it back together straight away it's no big deal but i would like to have it running because it seems like a pretty fun uh fun machine but uh yeah i'll meet you tomorrow bye all right so it's the next day for me but it'll be the same day for you guys um but i've got some parts um primer bulb uh, as well as a little kit to put in the carburetor from my local lawn shop. Um, fortunately, it did not listen to me. I only got 600 mils of this. There goes the primer bowl. I only got 600 mils of this um, pipe arcs for a meter. Um, they probably charged me for a meter, so uh, that's a bit unfortunate. However, I did get the main parts I needed, um, so we'll chuck them into the carburetor right, now. So we'll start pulling this carburetor apart have, as you may see, already pulled a little bit of stuff apart on it. I had to pull it apart to get this little priming bulb off anyway to take it into the shop. Um, but yeah, we'll start by pulling off this top cover. Side. Pull this side off. We'll have a look. There we go. Okay, we'll try and just slowly drag this strainer. Just try and get it out. Yeah, there we go. So there's our strainer. Oh, just drop the bloody thing. It's got a little bit of crud in it, but it's not too much. Probably would have run with that. Then we looks or looks like we got what appears to be a little jet in here. And pull this whole needle and seat out. Must be able to just Oh there we go. Yeah, I can just pull this whole needle and seat out. That's pretty cool. Let's go watch that spring doesn't go flying anywhere. Alright, so there's our needle.
that hole there looks clean, which is good. Okay, well everything seems to be clean now in this carburetor, from what I can see anyway. So I guess we can try and um, see if it will accept fuel. Hmm. Can put this new diaphragm in. Looks like it fits, which is good. It's always a good thing. Find that diaphragm as well. Oh, look at that. Sweet as that. Let's put these little screws in. Put that. Diaphragm in there. Then you pop this assembly back on. Just chuck this priming bulb on. Screw it all in. All right, we'll plug some fuel up to that and uh, I'll see if I can get it to at least prime and then put something out because I don't know whether it's going to put anything out just yet. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's looking a bit cleaner than it originally was. Um, it's not, <laughs> it's nowhere near perfect, but I mean, if it works, and it gets the thing going, I guess we're um, doing something right. All right, everyone, so we've got it back up, and we have now primed it all up. So, and as you can see by the little patch on the ground, um, we have fuel successfully running through the carburetor. Now, uh, old mate at the lawnmower shop's really lucky because the amount of line he gave me was just enough to... Uh, get me to this stage um but yeah anyway what we'll do is we'll oh crap we won't do that <laughs> we'll uh chuck the gasket back on chuck the carby on i won't make you just watch me put it back on because you've always seen or already seen me take it off um but yeah we'll do that we'll prime it up and we'll see if it wants to go all right so we've got the carby back on as you can see um now, I did discover a problem with it as well. I've only filled the fuel tank up just enough to get it going, um, as all the fuel leaks down, as it has no tap, and leaks into the carburetor and into the bull. So it floods the engine. Um, I only found this out yesterday when I was trying to obviously get it going with, without the carburetor all fixed. But um, yeah, so we'll see now, move it, move this. We'll see, will it run on its own power? Hopefully. Oh, nearly. Oh, getting close. I think it needs a bit of rev. Hands free. 
It is, seems to be idling quite well actually. Do any of our gauges work? Yes, yes they do. Holy. Okay, I reckon it's time to wheel it out and actually see if it wants to drive. All right, we'll see if it drives. Um, I didn't show it on camera, but I adjusted all the brakes. There was a bit of cursing in there when I was adjusting them, so I don't think YouTube really wants that. Um, so I haven't done any video on that. But uh, they're all working now. This back one was a big pain in the arse, and that's where all the cursing was. The uh, front one was seized, so that took a bit of time as well. Uh, but anyway, I guess it's time to see if it moves. Right, so I reckon what's wrong with it, there's a little centrifugal clutch in this gearbox here. So basically this gearbox is basically a big gear, and then there's a small gear on the inside there. So the big gear in the, the gear casing, obviously, and the little gear. Um, I have checked the, the oil as well. I didn't do that on film. Um, I had to fill it up a little bit. It's just regular gear oil, AD, ADW90. Um, but yeah, so the gearbox then mates to a drum in here and there's a centrifugal clutch. So a centrifugal clutch, basically a little, little circle with um, like little jaws on it. I don't know if that's what you call them. And they've got a spring in the middle or multiple springs, depends on what clutch it is. This one's only a Whippersima motor, so it'll only have one spring. Um, but yeah, as the engine, well, it was supposed to work, as you rev the engine, um, it's supposed to, obviously the engine goes faster, the, the force on the, the the jaws to come out is greater, so the jaws come out gradually as the, the engine speeds up and then they grab on the drum inside and that obviously turns your gear, the little gear, which then spins a big gear to spin this sprocket here, runs the chain to the back wheel and then your back wheel spin. So I think that's what's the problem. Um, it did actually drive on its own down the hill there, um, but it would not climb back up the hill. Uh, it was only like like literally revving it and revving it and revving it and it wasn't doing anything. Um, so yeah, I think the centrifugal clutch in there is either something wrong with it or it's really worn down and it needs to be replaced. I'm guessing it's really worn down um, as everything on this bike sort of a little bit how you going, so. Anyway, um, that'll be a topic for another video. We'll place that, and uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.